Great, so um, Renogen recently began trading on the ASX, even though it's already listed on the JSE's um, Alt-X exchange. Could you tell us why Renogen decided to go this route and what value can a secondary listing actually bring to both the company and its shareholders? Thanks. Uh, so, from a uh, given given the business sector that we're in, there were certain advantages to listing on the on the ASX. Um, first and foremost, being in the oil and gas sector, um, relatively little is known on the JSE about oil and gas. Um, there aren't that many fund managers in South Africa with a with a bent towards investing in oil and gas. Point in case there aren't actually many counters listed on the JSE with oil and gas exposure. Um, we're, we're one of the very, very few. You could argue Sassol, but Sassol's more a chemicals company. So that kind of leaves us out, out alone over here. Um, whereas on the ASX, that has a very, very strong oil and gas contingent, so the stock is better understood over there. Um, also, given the size of the company, you know, with a market cap of around between a billion and 1.2 billion rand, on the, a on the JSE we're quite small, whereas on the ASX we'd be considered a mid-cap and therefore there's a lot more liquidity on that side. And so we, we see a lot of advantage for a company such as ours to have a dual listing. In other words, a presence in South Africa for our South African shareholders that have been supportive of us, for instance, Mazi Capital, who's been there right from the beginning, um, but now also to give both the benefit of research out of Australia and the understanding out of Australia. In the secondary listing, Renogen raised twice the minimum subscription, um, closing at $10 million worth over subscriptions. Why do you think this was the case? And um, could you elaborate for us a bit on why this is such a significant milestone? So <clears throat> I'd say that probably one of the most exciting aspects of this business is, um, uh, is the fact that it's the first onshore licensed production right in the country, which means that we have first mover advantage. It also means that we're very close to production. We've got all of the necessary permitting in place. We've got the production right, we've got the environmentals in place. Um, you know, we're close to appointing the contractors for the construction of everything. So it's, it's a project that's almost ready to go. But more important than that is the, the grades of helium that we enjoy. So typically across the world, you'll see projects ranging from as low as 0.001% helium concentration up to what's considered to be world class between 1 and 1.5%. Yeah, our average is over 3% and we've got some wells up to 11%. So from a, um, from a strategic point of view and just given the strategic importance of helium as a commodity, um, it, uh, it, it becomes a particularly interesting project, especially when you consider how few companies in the world will give an investor exposure to helium. Um, if memory serves, I believe we're the first company listed on the ASX with, uh, with exposure to helium of any significance, um, definitely on the JSE. And you know, globally, it's a, it's a very tightly traded commodity. It's also a commodity that's come under enormous amount of pressure from a supply perspective. You had the Bureau of Land Management in the United States curtailing its production. Um, it, was, uh, it was declared as the second most critical element to US national security by the Department of Interior in the United States. So it's a, it's a very, very important commodity which not everyone realizes the significance of not having helium available. And I think the, uh, the market over there quickly understood and quickly appreciated it. And that was, that was why we, we were as oversubscribed as we were. The funds raised under the offer um, are to be used for further exploration and expansion of your Virginia Gas project, um, which is South Africa's first commercial energy project, which is said to contain significant natural gas resources and has one of the richest helium concentrations. Could you tell us a bit about this project and Renogen's plans for it? And um, what, okay, I know you did mention it now, but what concentration of helium does the project actually have? So. We've got, you know, we've got our P1, P2, which in, in gas peak is, is how much is proven and how much is, is, is probable. The, those reserves are sufficient for us to build the first project and, uh, and then to ramp up into a, into a base case scenario with significantly more production than the first project that allows for. So the, the kinds of numbers that we're talking about from a base case perspective will commence production with around 2,700 gigajoules per day. So to think of that in energy terms, if you had to think of it in diesel liters, it would be the same amount of energy of about 45,000 liters of diesel per day. That's to start off with. Our medium term goal is to reach 
energy production of about a quarter of a million liters of diesel per day, and that's in a base case scenario. Um, that's not actual production of diesel, that's just the energy equivalent in energy terms. From a helium perspective, however, this is where things get interesting. The starting value is about 350 kilograms of helium per day, which is more than South Africa's entire consumption and leaves a little bit in excess for export. The medium term projection on our base case scenario would see us producing up to about 1.3 to 1.5 tons of helium per day. And that would, that would be quite a meaningful number. Um, to, to put it in perspective, the planet consumes about 77 tons of helium per day. The proceeds of this IPO are going into the exploration of an additional pocket that we found in the field. So it's not part of the proven or the probable reserves. We discovered a sandstone trap. The sandstone trap is, is quite large. We'll, we'll release the figures a little later in the year, but the sandstone trap is quite large. It's got good permeability, good porosity, and it's the sandstone where we found um, wells are blowing helium at a, at a concentration of 11%. So now we intend to start drilling into that sandstone and to fully delineate the size of the, of the reserve in that. And then that will dictate whether we go with a base case phase two or whether we go with a much larger phase two. Perfect, thank you.